I've got a quick little number theory problem today, and we're gonna prove the following claim. The product of any three consecutive natural numbers is never a perfect nth power, unless of course m is equal to one. So that means if you take the product of three consecutive numbers, it's never a square, cube, fourth power, so on and so forth. And now maybe before we get started, I wanna point out what trick we will use. And that trick is to algebraically symmetrize this whole setup. So instead of writing something like k times k plus 1 times k plus 2, that's most definitely the product of three consecutive natural numbers, we'll write n minus 1 times n times n plus 1. Notice that's also three consecutive numbers, and they're natural numbers if n is bigger than or equal to 2, because that makes n minus 1 bigger than or equal to 1. Okay, so let's, by way of contradiction, suppose that we can write this product as a perfect nth power. So that means we've got n minus 1 times n times n plus 1 equals a to the m, where a is some natural number. Okay, so let's see where we can go from there. Now we can write this as n times n squared minus 1 equals a to the m. But now I want to look at the GCD of these two portions of the product. So let's maybe notice we have the following fact. We have n times n minus n squared minus 1 is equal to 1. So that's kind of an obvious formula, but what did we do? We wrote n, we took n and n squared minus 1, and then we found a linear combination of them that is equal to 1. But now let's recall that that means that 1 divides the GCD of these two things in these boxes. Well, let's maybe spell that out up here. AX plus BY always divides the GCD of A and B, where A and B are any integers and X and Y are any integers. But that's exactly the kind of setup we have here. So that means 1 divides the GCD of n and n squared minus 1, which further tells us that the GCD of these two numbers is equal to 1. Great. But if the GCD of those two numbers is equal to 1 and their product is a perfect nth power, that means each one must be a perfect nth power in its own right. So we can write that down now. We have n is equal to b to the m, and n squared minus 1 is equal to y to the m. I'm going to use slightly different notation there. Now I'll take this and square it because we've got n squared minus 1. We probably don't want to work with n. We want to work with n squared. So that's going to tell us that n squared is equal to b to the 2m, but I'm going to write that as x to the m, where x is equal to b squared. Now I'm going to write down what is maybe a very obvious inequality, and that's n squared minus 1 is strictly less than n squared, which is strictly less than n squared plus 1. So like I said, that's a very obvious inequality. But now I'll take that inequality and rewrite it with parts from our setup here. So notice this n squared minus 1 is y to the m. So we have y to the m is going to be less than, well, this n squared is x to the m, which is less than n squared plus 1. We don't directly have n squared plus 1 here, but moving the 1 over to the other side of the equation here, we have that's less than y to the m plus 1. Now, that doesn't seem super helpful, but we can take this y to the m plus 1 and notice that that is less than y plus 1 to the m. That's pretty obvious just by the binomial theorem multiplying that out. So let's see why we have a problem. Notice that we have pinned x to the m 
strictly between two consecutive nth powers. But that's impossible because there's no perfect nth powers between y to the m and y plus one to the m. Like I said, those are consecutive. So that brings us to a contradiction. So what did we contradict? Well, we contradicted that we had a solution in the first place way up here. So that means we must not have a solution in the first place, which means this claim is proven. And that's a good place to stop.